Okay, uh, got a new project in. This uh, Defender has come in from Holland, hence the steering wheel will be on the left hand side. So, um, obviously, this is not the engine we're going to be working on. Um, it does have a spooly spooly bit, but other than that, the um, fire is made in a different manner to what we're used to. So, uh, we're going to extract this, and uh, I'm sure Holly's cooking up something uh, great with eight cylinders for it. Okay, well, the TD5 engine is removed. I never thought I'd say it, but somehow we've gone backwards from diesel power. Mm, you could argue, if I was a vegetarian, that it's eco and green. But it's grey, not green. And I'm not a vegetarian, so that don't work on two counts. We'd best carry on then. Yeah, let's. Um, so, yep, TD5 engine is out, manual gearbox is out, the reconditioned transfer box and auto gearbox are in or mounted up in position. So that now leaves us to put a dummy block in here because it's nice and easy to work with so we can fabricate the engine mount and weld them on the chassis. Except Holly works faster than we can film. So um, hiding behind your leg there. Yeah. Is an engine mount in the right place? Sort of already done that bit. Yeah. Never let's, mind. Let's we... go and take a look now. <laughs> okay, so we've got a dummy block in position. Um, Holly has removed some engine mounts from range of a classic chassis so we know that the correct angle etc and we haven't got to spend any time fabricating anything there so it's nice and efficient. Um, we've hoisted the engine into position obviously bolted up to the bell housing of the gearbox which is on its uh, original mounting so we know everything's in position there. So that just leaves Holly to uh, weld these in place. Okay so the engine is now in its final resting place. Now, you tell me we haven't recorded anything on the engine specification yet. Not that I saw when I skipped through the rest okay, of the Okay, so video. if I'm repeating myself, it's your fault. You, the viewer, that he just pointed at. Oh, no. Uh, so, um, 4.6 GEMS fuel-injected engine, stage 3 cylinder heads, Piper 270 camshaft, ported intake manifold and trumpet base with a enlarged throttle, on, uh, throttle butterfly on the plenum chamber so this has been opened up here i think 71 millimeter rings a bell um, so it all coupled up to the gearbox holly has done a really nice job of building a nice stainless steel exhaust system for this now so that's all in done uh, 200 cell sports cats have been used on that other systems are what we're now connecting so we've made up the uh, power steering pipe um, hoses so that's all connected ready to go uh, top hose is obviously in We've got a couple of SPAL electric fans on the back of the radiator here that we've got the controller in place for. Bottom hose we're in the middle of making. Uh, other coolant we've got obviously the air bleed from the intake which goes to the uh, radiator here. And then the radiator will go up to the uh, top of the header tank here. Header tank main feed will come into the uh, bottom hose via the return from the heater matrix and obviously the heat matrix is supplied from the intake manifold as well. Um, ECU location is going to be over here with the multi plugs and then we've got the uh, power feeds and signals uh, to come and wire up here. Uh, we're actually going to try and integrate that into the car's electrics as much as possible so reusing the original inertia switch, fuel pump relay etc. We've changed the fuel pump over for petrol fuel pump and replaced all the lines with E10 compatible um, pipes. So it's all going quite nicely to plan. Um, air conditioning is currently by Bluetooth so um, we're just working out the uh, connections there because otherwise at present all the gases will escape and it won't do a lot. Um, yeah so uh, I reckon the next video or sorry, the next section of this video will be me not saying a lot and the engine running. And finally, we're out on the road in the Defender then. Obviously, the last thing we saw was uh, everything going into the car. Um, it's all finished, done, ready for the customer to collect, coming over from Holland in a few days' time. We've put a few hundred miles on this car, shakedown miles, all gone uh, faultlessly, smoothly as expected. The only kink we had to work out was the fuel gauge really, um, using a petrol pump and a diesel tank gave us different resistance values, but we've uh, sorted a device for that and it's all calibrated perfectly now, so that was the final thing ticked off. Um, car drives superbly, 
Um, steering wheel's on the wrong side, but we'll forgive it for that. Um, but the engine is, is crisp and responsive, as we'd expect, and wakes up when you uh, get your foot down with those stage three heads and the ported intake, which I believe I've mentioned the spec of before. Um, so, we're just out for a little bit of a road test. Need to find somewhere to abandon Steve so you can get some flybys, mate. At least that's the right weather for it. Yeah, well, you're wearing shorts, but don't get the camera on your legs because they're incredibly white, mate. You'll get, like, sunglasses warning. solar glare from them or something. Um, so, yeah, we'll uh, get some videos and then pop back to the workshop and get some shots of underneath the bonnet. Holly's done a really nice job of the exhaust system, which um, Steve put some overlays on. So, a stainless steel, four branch manifolds going into Turner Cell Sports Cats, single centre silencer, two and a half inch bore straight through. Um, to a two and a half inch tip uh, and uh, yeah uh, the exhaust note is just spot on we've just recently published an exhaust video actually on Defender 95th anniversary and um, this is on par with that even with the smaller tip being two and a half not three inch it's really really uh, similar sound level Range of a classic style auto gearbox, uh, fully rebuilt, um, it's nice and smooth for all gear shifts. Um, kick down works lovely. Um, the engine torque uh, output is um, really working well in conjunction with the kick down. I've had it a few times where I've been driving long just normally with very light throttle going up a hill. Uh, the torque is in there to pull it, and if it drops down a little bit, it just kicks down a gear and. Uh, you're up the rev range a bit more, you've not really altered your foot on the throttle pedal at all. So really, really nice outcome there. Uh, let's go this way, Steve. I'll drop you off in the woods. I don't know if I like the sound of that or not. <laughs> right, so, uh, yeah, I'll come back to you, I think, when we're uh, on a bigger road. So uh, obviously got a high spec 4.6 in here but drives very very smoothly on light throttle so just for normal driving around just casual driving very little throttle input required nice smooth gear changes from that auto gearbox and uh, it will just sit and cruise lovely um, so obviously we're on the GEMS Lambda sensors here as well, so it's a nice fuel efficient system because it's on a wideband Lambda sensor, which is the only injection system used by Rover that uses a wideband Lambda, so it's going to get a peak efficiency as well um, on cruise and when it's on closed loop. Obviously then, when you do put your foot down, the stage three heads, the ported intake, the larger throttle body all mean that engine can draw a lot more air up the rev range, and I can't see, this is an awful junction. Looks okay but to me. It's okay because you just put your foot down and the thing takes off and it goes, hello, this is why we put 4.6 stage 3 in here and not a 3.9. And we're up to, you know, 55, 60 miles an hour cruise speed, still effortlessly, um, still smoothly and quite responsibly. Yeah. What we'll do now is we'll uh, head back to the uh, back cave and uh, show you under the bonnet and just talk over uh, the components under there. Okay, so the power plant then. I've probably mentioned this already before the specification, but we'll go over it once more. So 4.6 bottom end to our specification. So a crack tested block, it's obviously passed, top hat line is installed. Stage three cylinder heads, so larger valves, larger uh, ports, both intake and exhaust. A fully ported GEMS intake manifold with correct trumpet base to match with shorter trumpets as well. An enlarged throttle disc gets opened up to, I think from the top of my head, 71 millimeters. All controlled by the GEMS injection software. So Tornado ECU chipped, unlocked ECU in there to run standalone. 
Uh, all of that's integrated into the car uh, as neatly as we can. So we've got a multi-plug down the back of the engine for where everything intercepts on the bulkhead, um, for speed transducer, gearbox connection, um, etc. And then we've got one large multi-plug underneath the passenger seat that intercepts all the original wiring for all the dashboard lights, uh, etc. and picking up power and that sort of thing. So really nice, uh, neat installation. Twin electric fans on the radiator, set to run at twin speeds, so a half speed all the time, and then when they need to kick in on the thermostatic control, they kick in at full speed, um, and all the original AC wiring's in place, so everything's functional there. Um, really, really nice conversion. Um, that's really all there is to see under here, so um, I think that finishes this video, Steve. I think it does, yeah. Yeah, so uh, that is a Defender TD5 conversion from beginning to end. Um, obviously not showing every little nook and cranny of the job, but um, all of the major parts. And uh, yeah, best got on with the next one, I reckon. Probably, there's lots more.